me and him would be eating and there's like a group of Asian thugs with like tatted down. They got the fucking rat tails. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're whispering and shit. They keep looking at us and we're like, yo, I don't know who those fucking guys are. I don't recognize them, man. I think they're, we're gonna get down, dude. And, then like, <laughs> and we're about to leave, right? And they're like, hey. And we're like, hey, what's up? And then they're like, are you guys that, that Uncle Sam, Uncle Chip? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they're fans. They're just fans. <laughs> Welcome back to another great episode of The Careful Boys. We are lucky enough to have with us today, Mr. Johnny Chang. Hey. <laughs> you know what's crazy? So like, during the break, I mean, we just going back and forth, and as things unfold, we're like, you know this guy, you know this guy, and then yeah. I feel so comfortable with Johnny because he's just like, you mentioned earlier, that dude that we grew up with in SGV, you cut out just a, a a general idea of who this guy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> we said that we said you look like an AI version of everyone we remember. Oh, <laughs> like all in just one. Like, yeah. <laughs> but there is a weird like familiarity I have with Johnny, where it just feels like the same areas we know, the same streets, the same groups, the same mm. gangs, like the same people, and that just blows my mind because it's like almost meeting someone from my past that I feel like I met before and it's kind of coming together like you did this and this you, oh you, wait, I heard of you guys and it's like fucking such a trip I low-key yeah. feel like I've met Joe somewhere before yeah yeah like for real you yeah 30? you look hell familiar for real yeah I'm 33 <clears throat> and I'm 38 but it's still the same that's like, he's one generation above yeah. basically you yeah. know but I and I know all the guys of his generation that he's talking about yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Because they were the, I, I mean, we're not OGs, but they were like the youngsters that looked, it was like, you know, we were looking at guys, like, let's say if we were 19, right? They were probably in high school. And then we were looking at guys in their mid 20s as OGs. Yeah. And then the mid 20 guys were looking at like the 30s, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, that was that kind of role where, like, well, like the guys were like five years younger than us. Yeah. Yeah. When you might have met Joe in the past, did he have a pacifier in his mouth? <laughs> oh, yeah, Could have been at a rave, bro. Yeah. No, I was, that was that wasn't that life yet. Okay, that I was right. like that was after that life. Just trying to jog his memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just other things. Did you ever put mama? Oh, uh, you might have spent too much time behind the bars to enjoy the festivity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The rave era? Yeah. That kind of died out by the time we were. Yeah. Oh yeah. When I got out, that was yeah, it was pretty much dead. Mm. You know what was interesting to me is like we were just getting into your um, your like kind of touch with God, like you just it was it was at that point where you were in your life of like your mom was telling you yeah, yeah, yeah. we weren't we weren't sure you didn't like the whole Christianity like hood hopping whatever it was. And then, um, what happened to where you started to, like, do it? So, there was a thing that I always felt was, like, this emptiness inside of my heart, right? Like, even when I was young, like, joining a gang and going to prison, I thought, like, oh, it's because I'm in jail that I feel empty and depressed, right? Um, but when I got out, like, you know, I had done anger management, counseling, got my GED, so everything looked like it was on the up, but I had this, like, void, like, this hole in my heart. And I, I, it didn't matter. I was I was also selling drugs and stuff like that, trying to make money, and nothing filled that, you know. And my mom actually was like, "Oh, you have that emptiness because you don't have God." And I was like, "Mom, like, just shut up," you know. Like I was like, I didn't want to hear that, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but after that happened, I had planned something, you know, to basically rob like a well-known drug dealer in Roland Heights area, where all the rich, you know, back then was where all the rich Asians was at, you know, Hacienda Roland. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was supposed to go to like the right of this car, and then the homie was supposed to go to the left of the car, but when I went to the right, he stepped in front of me, so I just naturally went to the left. And then, you know, these three gunshots rang out, and I was like, Damn, I thought my homie was blasting him actually, but he was getting shot and then the car sped off, you know? So he was shooting at your buddy who was in the driver. Yeah, so they had a dude in the back, in the back seat oh. ready. Oh. Like they knew we were setting up, a, like just in case, I don't think they knew. We were gonna basically rob him and take all their, their work, right? But basically like my homie got shot in the stomach basically and like chest, stomach area. And then oh, I remember vividly like the sounds, all of that. So. 
basically died in front of me. He died in my God arms, damn. you know? And then I was like, it was just a mix of emotions. I remember like getting angry, like feeling scared, feeling confused. And then, and then it hit me like, like when I got to the hospital basically with him, uh, essentially like that was supposed to be me. Basically. Oh wow! Yeah, if, I was to, if I was, if he didn't step in front of me, I would have probably, I wouldn't be here, you know. So, from then on, I felt that, like, okay, and and again, I brushed it off, being you know a gang member, you know, you don't, you, don't, you can't show that, right? Yeah. So, three days after that, um, I get this letter from one of my homies. He was a, he was a like a well-known graffiti artist back then. There used to be taggers and stuff like that, right? So he was a, a really well-known graffiti artist out, out in LA. And, you know, I grew up with him too. And he, he wrote me like this really eerie letter. It was like, you know, when you go to the, when you, you know, when you, when you're at, in the mountains, like think about me, you know, I'm always there with you, homie, this and that. And I was like, what the hell? And I realized it was a suicide letter. Oh, damn. Three days after that, I found out that he hung himself in county jail. Oh. And so, so, so it was like death, death. And then there was another, you know, shooting that, that happened on the freeway, basically. It was like a car to car shooting. My homie was an innocent bystander. He was really young. He was a, like a young homie, a little homie, like 17, shot in the head. Oh. Dead. So this was all within like a one week span. And damn. so I felt death, like what, what the heck is going on, you know? And then that was on top of my depression and everything else. And my mom was like, you know, you should try coming to church. And again, I was like, no, but her car broke down. And then, you know, I, I wanted to be good to my mom. So this is when you're out already? Yeah, when I'm out. So I took my mom, took her to church, and then it kind of unfolds with the Safa and Underbelly story, basically. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So that's how I kind of found God, basically. Wow. Mm -hmm. What what next after you found God, though? Like, um, Yeah, like what made you want to also become like a minister? Yeah, did you begin your own so, ministry? No, so, so I didn't ever want to become a minister. Like, I don't think people just wake up like and be like, who lived our lives? And was like, you know what, I'm going to be a pastor today. You know, <laughs> like that doesn't happen, right? Um, I never wanted to go to prisons. I never, like, I spent all my life after getting out. Like, I'm never going to go back to this place. But the pastor at the time who was kind of like my mentor, he explained to me that there's a lot of people who felt that emptiness and void that you felt. And like, it's a spiritual aspect of things, you know? So you gotta, you gotta like go in there and kind of like lace these people up, which means share with them like your story. And they're gonna, it's better than like if he went in there with a suit, nice cut, like people are not gonna understand. Yeah, yeah, they don't relate. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I was like, but again, I had all these thoughts like, bro, we don't talk on camera. I don't, open, you know, our culture is just not yeah. like that, bro. We don't talk about stuff like this. If I was in my teens and I had someone like you, like, talk to me straight about, like, get the fuck out of this stupid thing, yeah. like, I probably would have changed way quicker. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, versus a square in a suit that doesn't even know the life trying to tell you, you know what, you got to change. And it's like, of course you're going to say that. You don't know shit. Yeah. Exactly. But you'll listen to some OG that came out of prison and you're just like, yes, sir, I fucked up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when I go to these prisons, basically, I talk to these lifers and, and you know, just people who are, are going through it, you know, and, and they can relate to everything, even though we're different races. Because we have, we have like, it's, it's not just Christians, right, in there. There's Buddhists, Muslims. Mm. The one thing that, res that we're all interconnected with is, is the struggle. So like they can understand that, like that emptiness, that void, like I think a lot of people feel that, especially prisoners, you know? So yeah, it's it's doing really good, you know? They 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 like the fact that I'm there. I go every week, I go three times a week, basically to different- prisons. Different prisons? Chino, yeah. Norco, yeah. Lancaster, you know, all these different spots. And um, yeah, we're just trying to like help each person one by one. You know? That's tight, man. I mean, someone's got to go out there and reach out. Cause like, it's just a never ending pit when you were inside and you had to like, you know, you can't be soft at all and you kind of have to like create your own monster. Did you ever like, um, is there any space in your like bandwidth to make friends or even connect with anyone else on a human level at all? Or it's just always, I'm just going to be in here and people are going to try to kill me. I got to make sure I have my guards up. So when you're in prison, you actually have a lot of surface level relationships. Like it's, it's all good, you know, it, but nothing is ever deep. 
like and and the good thing about prison was that it made you know i'm from watching so we had enemies like asian boys and black dragon and whoever but when you go in there you have to drop all of you them. have to click up yeah because it's nothing but asians exactly so when you go in there it's there's no more gang banging there's no more you could have shot at my homie killed up killed my homie but we have to be cool because it's like us against the whole like it's race against race type yeah. of thing so. you, you know on that note which is fucking crazy so um you just brought back a memory and a rumor where um so so our our guys had beef with one of your other factions not your group but we heard um that that group paid your group to assassinate one of our dudes they drove up and they shot somebody in front of my buddy's house which ended up being a guy from your own camp you heard about that yes so it did happen uh, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So, so it that's that's a oh my god! You cleared up a rumor in my mind that's been in my head for like ever. And so the thing is, that special day we were supposed to have a rumble and and solve shit. So they knew we were all at this house. And uh, the guys that came, which is a different side a fraction of their gang, he didn't even know that this was gonna go down. He was smoking weed at the doorsteps. And when they came up and, and did the drive-by, they ended up shooting their own side. Damn. Yeah. And it was a it was a whole fucking mess. Wow. <laughs> oh shit. That's crazy. Damn. It's a rumor, by the way. Yeah, but it's a crazy rumor. <laughs> but I mean it's things a rumor like with that. a lot of detail. <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is, what's crazy is that when you're when you're in jail, when you get older, like all those things, it doesn't fucking matter. It just yeah. doesn't matter at all. You just, it's almost like I feel bad that everyone had to go through that at that age and you thought that you were like in war. It's like you're, in, you're like stupid little soldiers like being told what to do. And by the way, we left our whole group because when that incident happened, our, our OGs, we, you know, they said we need some money so we could go get some straps and retaliate this and that. They took our money and smoked crack with all of it. We didn't get anything. We, we didn't have anything to protect ourselves with. Allegedly, right? Allegedly. So we were like, what are we going to do? Like, we got abandoned by our own group. And then we started questioning that whole gang shit. And it was like, these guys aren't our brothers and taking care of us. And like, they're not doing shit. And then they wanted us to put in the work after, you know, that thing happened to us. So I was like, man, I'm in a group that's just not really taking care of each other. It's just all talk. And, and, and I think that was the biggest reality check for me. Cause I thought we were like, I really believed it. Like, hey man, like we go get them back. So we're gonna go get, you know, what we have to do. Like we're gonna need to get guns and shit. And it didn't happen. I'm like, damn. Wow, <laughs> that was a crazy uh, moment there. Yeah. So, so like you also mentioned that, um, you know, maybe there's like Asian gangs here, Asian gangs here, and you guys are like rivals and stuff. But then you go into, prison and then it's like everybody just clicks up because it's race wars and stuff um what happens for example like after y'all like come back out is it like all right back to our tribalism and that type of it's know, honestly like, dependent on the person i mean like you could go back to gangbanging but i mean you broke down spreads with people you shared like food with them like you know you guys went to war together like it's really kind of looked down upon so like me like i when I go back, I don't have issues with those people. And when I see them, I'm like, hey, it's all love. Because even if it's somebody representing them, like I was locked up with one of their big homies or whatever it is. So you kind of, it's not like you give each other a pass, but like like Joe was saying, you just start to realize like this is all bullshit. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. like a there's like a bigger picture, a bigger place. Exactly. And it, and and I, I honestly, I tell my homies all the time. I tell everybody like whoever enemies or whatever. I really wish that it was like this from the jump. Like we were, we were all cool, and we were just trying to like break bread and just better our lives. You know what I mean? Versus like running up and shooting people and doing stuff like that. You know? So that and and they're like, yeah, we agree, because it's much more peaceful. It's much more better nowadays. You know? Like yeah. in our era, like it was just, it was crazy, bro. Like I always thought too. I was like, all right, why you have so much Asian pride, but you're just out here killing other Asians. Yeah. And then there, there was beef with Mexicans or whatever, little bit, but that wasn't the main enemy. The main enemy was your like fucking Asian brothers and shit, like from other groups. That's what blew my mind. 
I, I mean, really certain areas, that. it was main, it was like, you know, certain gangs were really like on that kill Asian type of thing. But for the most part, yeah, what Joe's saying is great. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. when you saw um, like Mexican thugs or, or black, you didn't really hit them up. They, you, they were just invisible. They're like, they're just doing their thing. We're doing our thing. And when you see an Asian kid with Cortez's on, it was on. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Remember uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Cortez's? Okay, like. What's crazy? It's like. Or Cortez's. It's right? When you see. Like, Take them off, bro. Take them off. It's <laughs> weird how you, like, you, like, form friendships. Because you're like, oh, he's 18th Street. That's cool. But then it's like, wait, shouldn't it be, like, if it was about your race, it would be like, no, no, 18th Street's not cool. Lomas is not cool. But it's like, no. you have all these Asian gangs being cool with all these other Hispanic gangs, but then it's just Asians fighting Asians and the Hispanics fighting Hispanics too. Man. But I think that was really something about the SUV in general. The dynamic is like, all hoods, if you notice in our era, didn't get along. Nobody was cool. Like, whoever the Mexican hoods, like, they all beefed it with each other. And then That's even true. Asian hoods yeah. too. Like I, I, no, I mean dubs were not cool with it. Even dubs within dubs were not. Yeah, cool. there we was. Yeah. It's called set tripping. We were set trip and stuff. Like it's, it was crazy, bro. And now it's like people are all cl- like you know Long Beach is like they, there's like a lot of cliques where they click up and then yeah. they go against people or they go with blacks and go against whoever. It was never like that in the San Gabriel Valley, you know. Mm. Yeah, but I felt like gang banging was our generation because before that they were just doing mafia stuff yeah that's right and then our generation wanted to be cooler so yeah. i saw the transition so true. from <laughs> asians dressing like gq and hong kong style and more like like mafia style to like looking like cholos and street thugs and 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 like our generation adopted that they did away with the dilo silo system like the you know, because there were Chinese gangs that were starting to recruit multiculturally. Like, by my generation, it was mostly Japanese, Chinese, and Cambodians in, in my group. And then, and then so they weren't even honoring the Cantonese system. And then we started changing the names. We started using words like, oh, that's my OG. And then so I think that's where kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then they weren't doing the the hitting up and like gang like they weren't pulling up on people saying where you from. Like they're trying to stay low key, yeah. do the extortion stuff and bur- you know like yeah. they're doing that stuff. They, they weren't trying to make they money. Weren't getting t- I mean, they would get tats, but it would it wouldn't be like me, bro. I would they yeah. would just look at me like you're dumb, you know? Like <laughs> well, you're literally like blasted and like big old target on your back. People they get like, mad because they had like dragons and stuff like yakuza style yeah. like, under the suit. Yeah. yeah. It's in the shape of only a t-shirt, so the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of, uh, what do you think of the response of, we always wondered about this, but like, when you see certain Chinatowns and certain like Asian communities in California, mm-hmm. when there's attacks and there's elderly people getting hurt, uh, a popular response to that from our generation is to be like, oh man, when if Asian gangs were active, yeah. it wouldn't happen as easily. Do you think that's true? I think, um, I think so, in certain areas, honestly, because although we fought a lot, like kind of Joe was mentioning, I had a lot of issues with Hispanics when I was growing up, yeah. just in my area. And um, a lot of the work we put in kind of made them realize that we can't do this to these people. You know what I mean? Like, even though we, we fought each other as well, but it kind of set the trend that like, okay, we can't beat up on grandmas yeah. and rob, you know what I mean? And that kind of set the tone for, for them, you know? and. I feel like it's the same way. Like if there was, let's say that like our generations, it, it just went back to that. And it was like in Oakland or whatever. I don't think they would be that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think we would band together and actually, you know, do something about it. But well, again, we also, it's, it's hard to say that because I could play the other side of the fence too. Like, we also would do home invasion robberies on ourselves on too. your own place yeah. Yeah, like so true. it's it's really hard to say but personally like from just speaking from my my experience the type of person that i am that's how i would i would i would work you know what i mean yeah. what people don't know about that era is like if they didn't recognize you in the neighborhood and you're just walking around with a basketball just minding your own business three four guys are going to walk up to you and ask you where you're from and stuff yeah. And if you're not from that area, they don't recognize you. Some, even if you say like, oh, I'm not a gangster or whatever, they'll just beat you for fun. Yeah. So that was why P 
people just stayed in their own communities. Like yeah. people didn't yeah. go out. And I think that was Chinatown. Like I remember Chinatown was like, actually they had gangs, but they were hidden. Like they were like chilling. And then like, if someone caused the ruckus at a shop, an old man would pop out and he's armed or like whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like now it's not like that. It's just a safe, tourist right. place and security guards or a bunch of kids that come out and jump the fuck out of whoever's causing trouble yeah yeah, yeah but it's not like that no more that's another uh, another question we, that we kind of run into a lot as well is like since you still live in in uh, this area mm -hmm. um we were talking about how back in the day it was like you couldn't i can't remember being able to just walk around and yeah. pass a group of other Asians that I didn't know without them fucking with me in yeah, some way. Like sure. they would just... I just wanted to get some boba, dude. Yeah. Yeah. They would just have something to say, <laughs> like no matter what. Yeah. yeah. But like, and I was trying to ask some young people that live in the SGV now, like, does that happen to you? Mm -hmm. And some of them say, yeah, like that happens. Oh. But then... Wow. What, that there's still really? Asian gangs? Yeah, some of them say that. Wow. That's not even gangs. It's just people. Like, like bullying? Not even, yeah, they're not, oh. they're not bang, banging or anything. They're just like... You know, just to punk them, but like, I don't, I don't see that really I, I anymore. I never see that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that. Back then, yeah, like you said, it, it, you would have to like walk around. Like yeah. we would fight, like even when like kids would fight when they're not even from gangs. Like yeah. People yeah. would just roll up on them. Like I've seen kids who would go to like like Alhambra High School or something, and they would just get beat up like on on Third Street or whatever. And they're not even gang members. They play basketball. Yeah. You know, like. And so, yeah, I, but I don't see that. Honestly, I, I don't see that around. I don't even hear of it really happening like that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's more of like a school thing or like a... Yeah, there were even non-gangsters that loved just fist fight. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. they would go to different schools just to look for someone to fist fight with. Yeah. yeah, it was a. I just think it was a different time the glory days, with huh? like more no, no, no. aggression. Cause now yeah. people... Yeah. Bring it back. Yeah. It's, it's not just that too. I remember like when meth hit. Like there was a point oh. where, I don't know if you guys remember that, but every, they would have like groups of people and just like passing pookies around, you know? And they were, and that really messed up a lot. It cracked out a lot of people. Yeah. It made Omani the way that it was, mm. you know what I mean? Like, and it just, it, everyone was just crazy after that. Cause they were actually basically come either on the come down or, you know, yeah. or like that. So people don't realize that, but that, that hit the SGV hard. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Damn, dude, that's crazy. Um, one thing, you know, it's just talking to you, it just feels like a different life, but it's just all these emotions and memories coming back. But I think um, you might relate with this, but like when you get out or like just when people are looking at you and you're at a cafe, I used to get those feelings of like, who are they? What do they want? But did they come up to you and say, can I get a picture? Because I saw you on Wasap <laughs> Bro, that happens all the time. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was... You know where JJ's is at, right? Yeah. Me and him would be eating, and there's like a group of Asian thugs with like tatted down. They got the fucking rat tails. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're whispering and shit. They keep looking at us, and we're like, yo, I don't know who those fucking guys are. I don't recognize them, man. I think they're, we're going to get down, dude. And then, <laughs> I just want to go to Elac and shit, bro. I don't want to fight no more. <laughs> and then we, we get up and we're like, and we're about to leave, right? And they're like, hey. And we're like, hey, what's up? And then they're like, are you guys that, that Uncle Sam, Uncle Chip? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they're fans. They're just fans. <laughs> Remember that, dude? Yeah. Bro, yeah. do you get do you get that kind of feeling still? Yeah, bro. Oh man, people I don't get that stare. Yeah. You know, you, we have yeah. like we're observant naturally, living that lifestyle. So I'll see people <laughs> stare at me like double take, and I'm like, please God, don't let these people be <laughs> not, like, you know what I mean? Not today. Like, There's like a layer of I think like PTSD that doesn't go away. I show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Can I have a photo? Yeah. 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 They're like, are you? Like, your are you Johnny? Yeah. And I'm like. <laughs> I, sometimes I just want to fuck with them, like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> or point at my homie who doesn't look like me, like, that's Johnny right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>